we can't let them do that because it's a threat to everyone at that point in time. And I'm not being biased. I have many friends in law enforcement, many friends, and they're honest con. And they'll tell you straight out, we don't approve of what's going on. Retired FBI agents that I know now are sickened to what they see now. Wow. I mean, come on, this is, I mean, look, I mean, even Comey, what's going on in his book tour? I mean, the, the things that he's saying that are coming out of his mouth, it's an embarrassment to the FBI, in my opinion. Because there's a lot of hardworking, you know, honest, legitimate agents that do their job. And a guy like this, in my opinion, is tainting everything else. I mean, it, it's terrible. Terrible. I've never seen this level of corruption. And I'm being honest. What can we do about it? What can be done about it? You know, I don't, it, it seems to be so out of control because people are not aware. They, they don't understand this. You know, when you allow the government to cross the line, it doesn't only affect the people that are crossing the line, it affects everybody. Yeah. Because if they do it with one person, they can do it with another. <laughs> no doubt about it. Michael, what age did your dad become a mobster by? What, what age did he become a made man or get into that life? The oldest living uh, man in America, my dad, uh, he's been a made man for over 68 years. So he was in his, yeah, he was in his 30s. 33 Overse when he became, so 32, yeah. 33 when he became a made man. Correct. Now, Somewhere does that mean he wasn't involved in mob life prior to that? Because you don't just become a made man your first year. Was no. he part of it for about 10 years or so? My grandfather was not a made guy, but he was very respected by a lot of made guys. Got it. He just didn't want to be that. Got it. My father was one of, uh, he had, had three brothers. They were all kind of street guys, but my dad was the only one that aspired to be part of that life. My dad was an amateur boxer. He was a tough guy, street guy. And he was recruited by the mob and he, he wanted to be a part of it. And so he, he went through the thing and took the oath like me. Michael, I think what would be very uh, interesting is for us to do something with you and Sonny, you and your dad. If we sat down and we did an interview there, that would be a whole different story because he's still, based on what you're telling me, he's healthy, he can still talk, he's still, his brain works the same as yeah. before and he can still process issues. That'd be a very interesting person to be talking well, about. Well, remember, he goes back to the days of Luciano and Costello. Oh, my and gosh. He, he'll even tell you about Capone because he was younger then, but he knew Capone came out of New York. So he knows right he did of, stuff with Capone? Well, he knew him. I'm not saying, I don't know what he, exactly what yeah. he did, but he knew him.